Hello again everyone, Edwin Lernard back once again. In this YouTube video segment, I'm going to be dissertating and talking about something of a, a rather sad nature that has left many people despondent and really a lot of people in a, a strong state of trepidation. And many of you may have heard on the news recently there was a terrible massacre that took place in Charleston, uh, South Carolina. And the, the reality is, is that there were nine people were shot dead in a church in a congregation a place where one is supposed to feel protected uh, by the man upstairs by the lord and and it really i mean it, it just it's at a point now where we see so much violence going on and is there any place that's a hundred percent safe anymore i mean this is just really it's preposterous how things like this happen I mean, do we really, are we going to be in fear in that and be petrified just going to the movies just or going to a mall, going, going into a church, into the congregation where we want to be at peace, where we want to have that sense of tranquility? And there was a debate on a Dr. Drew show. You know, many of you know I've talked about this frequently. I, I think I've become addicted to that channel. I the HLN network. I love watching the Dr. Drew show because there's so much provocative insight into various subjects and a wide divergence of topics. And, and they talk about things that are significant in the news and that are relevant. And I believe this is very relevant uh, subject. And the, the, really the debate was, is this, um, is this person that, that did this, is there just, is he psychotic? Is there just something mentally wrong? They say, well, if the person is a racist, then there's something that's not, uh, that it, that's all that is, that is what some people say. Well, I understand somebody being a bigot or racist is one thing, but if you're gonna take, you're, you're gonna go out and murder nine people, it does make you wonder if there's something wrong uh, with this person and there might be some mental illness. I think it's actually, it's a combination of the two, really, and I'm not saying this just to be like politically correct, and, and but I do believe that it is probably more, in my opinion, it's the combination of the two elements that you'll hear people say that you can't correlate uh, mental illness uh, with racism. Well, one could be a racist and not have anything wrong maybe with their with their brain cells or, or whatever or, or have any mental impairment or, or what have you. But in other in some cases I believe there can be something that there might not there may be something wrong mentally uh, with the person as well. And you take this to such a high level. It's hard for me to just dismiss that there there could be something wrong with this person. There's something, when, when people act like that and take it to such a volatile level to the point where you're killing innocent people that did not do anything to you and, and there's no justification, there's something in, in my opinion that that's not right, but that's, uh, that's just my uh, outlook and perspective on that. Now you'll have a lot of people that will have debate and won't agree with what I what I'm saying, but that then so be it. There was also something they touched on the Dr. Drew show last night. I thought was interesting. They said somebody was talking about, excuse me, somebody was talking about. Well, if a lot of black people, like they go on a rampage, say like in the Baltimore uh, riots, that they'll just be referred to as thugs. Well, I think the, the, pro, the thing about that is if you have a, a, a large group of people and regardless of race, creed, or color that are committing heinous crimes and they're, and they're doing this simultaneously, they're doing it in a large group, it would be hard to say, well, all these people are all psychotic or, or, they're, or there's something mentally wrong with all of them because the odds are when you have that many people, there is, that, that wouldn't be the case. But I don't, at the same time, I don't know, I don't think we have to refer to them as thugs because uh, because people of all colors have done things like uh, like that at one point in time, I would say that have uh, that have rioted. So it, it shouldn't be something uh, a stigma that would just be should be connected uh, just with black people. I mean, 
it seems like there is a little stereotype with that and I me being a white person I could even uh, acknowledge that and I don't and being referred to as thugs may not be the the appropriate term for that I think it's just people that are, are committing iniquitous acts is what it, what that's really about now could somebody could one could a few of those people in that riot could there have been something wrong with uh, with them now that could be possible but to say that there was something mentally wrong with every single person that was committing that was doing the writing that's something that really that we we know that's not uh, that's not plausible that's just not logical to think now back to the the charleston uh, south carolina or i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right charleston uh south carolina the, the incident there it, it's sad because there was somebody on dr drew i believe it was on thursday i think it's uh, Van, is it vanessa barnett i think is her name and she was brought to tears over this because it because of, simply because it's not it really it just shows that no place in, in, a, in a place that's connected with religion that has to do with somebody where they should feel safe and protected that it, it, that incident epitomizes that there's no place anymore that's a hundred percent safe and, and, and has that protection and I did feel I did feel for her and I feel for the people that, that feel this way now and that there's really, there's really, the, the point is no matter where you go anymore, there's always going to be that possibility, unfortunately, uh, of something volatile happening, something that might be perilous. People, uh, it's at a point where if I'm to even to go like long distance traveling, I have certain reluctance and apprehension. I don't think I'm going to go on a plane wherever I go. I can't. I can't really go on a plane anyway due to my lack of funds because it, the prices are too exorbitant as far as traveling on a plane but I would probably go uh, go the Greyhound route and, and I'd leave the driving to them so to speak because it would be more frugal for one thing it would be more uh, be more economical but it, I'd feel a little bit safer because I'm, I'm kind of in fear of terrorism and I feel that there at least be a little better chance of resolving a situation that might be terrorist related if I was traveling on a bus as opposed to a plane that is just my uh, perspective on that but the, the, what's what's terrible too is that in that the shooting in, in South Carolina in Charleston that not only were nine people killed nine black people were killed uh, there were multiple gunshot wounds to all of them and think about the families that are impacted this had this impacted a multitude of people because the family members of all those people now have to go through this devastating loss of them is this going to impact people and, and make them reluctant to go to, to some people to be even afraid to go to church of course it will it'd be ludicrous to think otherwise I think and uh, really uh, it, it, the whole the whole situation for me to, to see this is, is, is just very it, it's something just so um, it's just so repugnant and it, it's something that's so vile and say I hope that this person really um, does something not I mean remorse is really not the thing right now but he has to, he's gonna obviously have to ask for mercy from the higher power so to speak at this point and I give the credit to one of the I believe one of the family members of one of the people that were killed had actually said uh, that uh, she forgave him for what what he did and that takes a lot to hold back and in being able to not uh, have feelings of vengeance or, or feeling vindictive I really give credit to that woman for for saying that if only we all could be that merciful and forgiving and I'm sure this person I mean it's almost a travesty to justice if this person doesn't get the death penalty I mean the very least he he'll almost definitely get would be life in uh, in prison without parole but I I feel that he probably will get the death penalty in this particular case so I guess time will tell but um, 
but it just goes to show you that we we have to it's sad to have to be skeptical and be in fear and, and to really almost go anywhere anymore and it just shows you where society is going it's it's kind of odd ironic in a way in an era where i i mean i believe overall that prejudice and bigotry has has, has deteriorated and has diminished yet it's almost it feels like we're, we're more unsafe than we were maybe 20 years ago in terms of going out somewhere, going out to a place in public in fear that this something like this could happen anywhere. I just thought that's kind of, I don't know who agrees with me on this, but I think that it's just a little odd if you know what I'm saying. Anyway, people, that'll conclude this YouTube uh, video segment on the shootings and Charleston, South Carolina, and this is Edwin Leonard, and until next time, people, stay well.